Hi everyone, welcome to the Real Estate Tax Tips channel. My name is Cherry Chen, a Chartered Professional Accountant located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And I'm on a mission to become the Google Map for hardworking Canadians seeking financial freedom. And that's the reason why from time to time I have experts like today's expert Dahlia Basum from Streetwise Mortgages to share with us on different mortgage tips and tricks. But before I get started, I just want to remind everyone to give us a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. Now, Dahlia, tell me about you. Cherry, thanks for having me today. I am uh, the founder of Streetwise Mortgages. We are a leading mortgage brokerage that works with <clears throat> investors primarily. Um, and our mission is to help Canadians prosper through property investing and helping them use the best tools, money tools available to them to scale up their portfolios and build wealth. I um, moved to Canada when I was 20. Mm. I used to live in the Middle East. I lived in Kuwait for the majority of my life, although I was born in Egypt. Oh. And uh, yeah, Canada for me was the, the uh, door to heaven, literally, because it is the white canvas for me as a woman coming from the Middle East to tap into potential and to do what I wanted to do because the cultures are very different when it comes to women in the Middle East versus North America. Oh, absolutely. The only thing that I know about Kuwait is, um, I mean, back in the days I was still in Hong Kong and the only thing that came across my mind is Kuwait was under attack by, was in war with um, Iraq. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes. Good memory. Yes. yes. That's yes. Right. I was there during the Gulf War. Yep. Oh, you were there? Yeah, I was 14 and I was there during the entire Gulf War in Kuwait. A lot of people left the country, but we stayed. Oh, you stayed? Mm -hmm. And you weren't concerned? Oh, we were concerned and we've seen a lot of things that I still have fresh in my memory in my memory mm, yeah yeah we were just talking earlier how lucky we are to be in Canada because we often take it for granted for things that happen around us because you're a woman I'm a woman I know I grew up in a family that primarily favors the the, the son over the daughter because purely because of um, the sex orientation yes. right it has nothing to do with like whether I do better at school or not, no matter what, what I do in life, and they still would favor the son over the daughter. Um, so that's why I always admire and always feel very fortunate to be here. Same here. Yeah, building our own world, our own business. Absolutely. So back to our big, biggest topic. I mean, I know you can help many clients and you have been helping some of our clients to um, get as many po po uh, mortgages as possible. And I know you have that magic hands to be able to restructure people's debt and you actually go through um, the plan. Um, I get all that because people who want to grow, they would be able to use different type of money to grow. Yes. Now the problem is not about growing, at least in my mind. Some yeah. of the clients approach us and said, well, can, you, can we have a plan because I have to work extra hours to pay for the extra interest cost, a rising interest cost, on, not on their own home, but on their rental properties. Yes. And that's very sad, right? Yeah. So I wonder if you have any advice for people who have significant negative cash flow now. How do they survive through the, um, this storm? And I know that it's not going to be long lasting. I know the forecast is that, okay, they're gonna reduce the rate in like six, uh, 12 to 18 months. We don't know what we don't know. So what right. can we do now? Right. So to your point, Cherry, right now, some clients are experiencing pain yes. and cash flow pressure. Mm -hmm. and we always say you got to look at the two sides of the coin. You got to look at what you can do on the income front, mm -hmm. meaning can you uh, increase your rents? Uh, can you uh, rent uh, by room? Can you add some rental income to the portfolio? Aside from working a part time job, of course, if, if you have to, you have to. Mm -hmm. But what can you do on the income front? Myself and my team look at the debt restructuring front. So mm -hmm. together, that's a powerful combination. And there are solutions right now. Um, they are solutions to alleviate the pressure. And what I tell clients is, I'll walk you through these solutions shortly. These are not things that are going to stay with us for the rest of our lives. We're just doing what we need to do to 
alleviate the pressure so mm. that we can ride the cycle yep. and then we can revisit where we are at that point and do something else. Mm. So that's really the context, okay? So there are several solutions to deal with the cash flow pressures and I'm happy to walk you through what uh, those look like. Awesome, so let's get that started then. Okay. So Dahlia, now that you've told us that you have some tips and tricks that you can share with our audience during this recession time. So can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yes, so we have five strategies to help clients with cash flow pressure right now. I'm gonna list them here and then we're gonna go through some examples. The first strategy is about creating capacity in your budget. Oh, in, in the budget. your budget. So what I mean by that is you may have a property that is, that is experiencing a negative cash flow, but maybe somewhere in your budget you have uh, a payment, a big payment, a big car payment, or a big uh, payment on a loan, like an RSP loan or some sort of loan. And what I would do is I would say, okay, maybe you're paying um, $1,200 here and your negative cash flow is $300 here. Is there, a, is there an opportunity in your portfolio where I can take some equity out that using a line of credit or a mortgage and clear this loan so this payment drops from $1,200 to something much smaller, could be now $50 or $70 even because we're using cheap money to clear it. And now all of a sudden, from a budget standpoint, instead of being $1,500 cash outlay or cash negative, you're actually in a much better position. So it shrinks the gap, that's one way. Oh, that's amazing. Cause I do, when you talk about $1,200, I do have a $1,200 car payment. I could potentially use my, what, what you are saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is to use my line of credit to eliminate that debt altogether. Yes, and I would, what I would do is, because I understand sometimes for self-employed clients, mm. that car payment is tax deductible or is, is, is um, something business related. Yeah. I don't want to lose that advantage. So I would keep that line of credit separate for tracking purposes. Absolutely. So you're now tracking that payment um, for tax reasons. Okay, that is just one example. I mean, it doesn't have to be a car payment per se. It could be whatever it would be, right? Right. Yeah. I'm just talking about a monthly payment that is big enough that I can clear for you using equity in a property, whether through a mortgage mm. or a line of credit, so that your monthly payment now drops significantly and from an overall budget standpoint, you are better off. Oh, that's awesome, that's great news. Strategy number two is about extending, extending amortization. I talk about this before, but I personally don't know how to do it. Okay, so let's say I just want to show you quickly the impact of the strategy. Let's say you have a $500,000 mortgage and that $500,000 mortgage is on a 25 year M. You look at your mortgage mm. statement and it's on a 25 year M. If we stretch this amortization to a 30 year M, okay, then roughly you would, your monthly payment would go down by about $250 just by ex giving this amortization an extra five years. And you're probably gonna ask me how, right? How? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like everyone wants to know how, and like particularly, are you really allowed, quote unquote, allowed to do that? Okay, so there are banks that if you go to the branch and you are, you are originally on a 30 year amortization mm -hmm. and you are now at 25 or less, or less than the 30 years, there are banks that would allow you to stretch back without re-qualifying for the mortgage. Mm, okay. But there are situations where we have to re-qualify the deal as if you're getting a new mortgage and stretch that amortization out. Yeah. And there are lenders on the street right now that are offering 40-year amortization. What? The, yes, the interest rates are higher, mm. but again, it's about cash flow, cash flow mm. right? So. What is the objective here? Are we looking to save on interest or are we looking to manage cash flow? Right now, if the pain is cash flow, then let's deal with that and then later on switch to optimize for interest savings. But yes, there are lenders who can go up to 40 years right now. That's amazing. So that's, that would be extremely, extremely helpful. Now that we wrap up number two, what's number three? So number three is about converting a portion of your mortgage 
to an interest only mortgage or an interest only payment. So let me show you an example. Let's say you have a mortgage for $500,000 and it's on a variable rate mortgage right now at prime minus 50, which is prime is 5.45. And let's say that mortgage is on a 30 year amortization. The payment on this loan right now would be 2,600 and something roughly, okay? If I take this mortgage and slice it up into two components, and this has to be done through a refinance. This is not something you can just switch. It's a refinance, but what we would do is we would say, okay, let's, let's take 250 of this mortgage, keep it as a mortgage, and then take 250 and make it a line of credit. On a line of credit, you would be paying interest only for now, okay? And although the interest on a line of credit is higher than the interest rate on a mortgage, the payment is actually lower because it's interest only. So through this restructure, this would save you on a this size mortgage, not a big chunk of money, but it gives you a little bit of breathing room. It's only $100 difference okay so it's a last 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 resort that i would look at but i just wanted to put it out there for you as food for thought and this line of credit uh, could be converted to a mortgage down the road if you go with something called an advanceable line which is a line that you can you can easily roll back into a mortgage when you're ready that's amazing so like this is particular example is a hundred dollar cash flow saving yeah but is it possible to convert more than 250 to the line of yes this is just an example right mm. so th this strategy is about taking that mortgage and slicing it into components to help manage cash flow and there are products on the market that allow you to do that within with one one lender you can take a mortgage and say okay the first portion is a mortgage on a fixed rate, the second portion is a variable rate, the third portion is gonna be a line of credit. So what is that combination that we can put together that will help your budget is the question. That's a very creative thing that I didn't know that you can actually go back and slice it in multiple ways. That's yes. awesome. Yes, you can. Now we cover all three. They're all super creative. I've never thought about any of these as an accountant. Um, I am going to direct a lot of our clients' questions to your team now. Now, what are the fourth and the fifth secret? Okay, the fourth one is what I call freezing the payment. This does not create um, additional cash flow, but it puts a cap on future increases, obviously. Mm. So I'm not talking here about locking into a five year fixed mortgage. There are couple of options here. One option right now is to take a one year fixed, okay? So that for the next 12 months, you're riding this and sleeping at night and you don't have further increases to deal with, or you can take a two years fixed, or you can take something called a, it's, it's still called a variable rate mortgage, but it's, it's a type of a variable rate mortgage where the payment stays fixed and if interest rates rise further, beneath the surface, more goes towards interest and less goes towards principal. So if interest rates rise, this payment stays as is, but beneath the surface, the allocation changes. Again, this one is not gonna create additional cash flow, but it just stops the pain, mm -hmm. knowing that there is potentially further increases coming up. Yeah. So. Now, I always have follow-up questions. <laughs> yes. So what's the one-year fixed rate right now based on like someone who already have a couple of rental properties per se? Well, the rates are different depending on the situation. Mm. I don't want to just say this is the rate because not everybody qualifies for it. So mm, yeah, that's right. This is why I don't quote rates. Okay, that sounded just like me. I don't quote give anybody <laughs> pricing. So, but that's true though. Like it's I told, a, it's, I could, the, it's the truth. Yeah, I, I could say, you know, here is the rate, and get somebody excited, and then yeah. they come to us, and I go, oh, but you can only get this rate. No, it's by individual, by financial Absolutely. situation. Absolutely. So if you want to find out the rate, you have to email info at streetwisemortgages.com. Dot com. Now, um, now that we covered the fourth one, let's talk about the fifth one. Okay, I heard that the fifth one is a crazy magical one. So we need a lot more data and example to go through this. Tell us about the fifth secret. 
Yes, this one is a very, very powerful one, and we call it the cash flow booster. And I will demonstrate through an example what this would look like and what mm -hmm. it would do to your cash flow. So we're going to talk about the cash flow booster. Let's say you have a property right now where that property has a $500,000 mortgage. This applies to any size mortgage, but I'm just using a $500,000. $500,000 mortgage and it's a 30 year AM and the rate right now on this property is at 5% because the rates have gone up. Let's say this property is renting for $3,500 per month and in terms of expenses, I am going to assume expenses are 30% ratio of this 3,500, so roughly $1,000 a month, okay? Mm -hmm. The mortgage payment on this $500,000 right now is 2,760 roughly. If you run the math, there will be a negative cash flow on this property right now of about $300, okay? So what do we do here? Well, here is what we can do. What we can do is look at swapping this mortgage payment, converting it to an interest only payment. And here is how. If we can set up a secured line of credit on this property, okay, let's say there is equity in the property and we can set up a secured line of credit, let's say for 50,000 or whatever the number is. And most importantly, this line of credit has to be a dynamic line of credit, meaning okay. it's an advanceable line. What does that mean? As we pay down this mortgage, as we continue to pay it down, this line of credit capacity goes up. That's the beauty about advanceable lines. So here's how it would work. You've got a $2,760 mortgage payment every month. Your cash flow and expense, and your cash flow and numbers no longer support it or cover it. So what do we do? Here is what I suggest as an option. We can take 2,760,000 from this line of credit, pay this mortgage payment, okay? And out of this payment, half of it roughly would go back to the line of credit. So you're not losing it all when you pay it because this line of credit is dynamic. Half of that payment will roughly go back to the line of credit when it's an advanceable line. So let's say you've made this payment, but now you have to pay a payment on the line. The payment on a $2,760 is about $14 interest only payment on the line. So if you run the numbers, now your rental income minus expenses minus a $14 payment is gonna leave you with a big positive cash flow here you're going to be in the green instead of being in the negative every month. But you're going to say, Dahlia, I'm now using debt to pay debt. How does this help me out? Well, here is how it works. As I said, half of the payment comes back to the line. If you use this line for, let's say, 18 months, because we're expecting this to last roughly like 18 or 24 months, by the end of the 18 months, you would have a balance on the line of credit of $50,000. Guess what the annual payment on a $50,000 line is right now at today's rates? It's about $250 a month, uh, $250 a year, sorry, not a month, a year. By the end of the 18 months, you're also going to have roughly $50,000 of accumulated cash because now your cash flow is much bigger every month. So you have the option at the end of the 18 months to use some of this to clear the line or all of it to clear the line, or you can convert this line back to a mortgage if you want to go back to principal and interest payment. But that will help you ride the wave because now you're not struggling in covering that cash flow negative property out of your pocket every single month. In fact, you're accumulating a reserve and your payment here is much smaller than this payment. Oh my God, that's genius. <laughs> that's genius. So um, now following up on these questions, now that we share with you all the strategy, following up to this particular strategy, um, you know, I always have follow up question. Yeah. I always throw you <laughs> uh, into the spotlight. 
Um, if you have a choice between choosing like financing, as in like now you're going out, I have the whole Scotia Bank uh, private wealth option mm -hmm. available. Would you try to get a mortgage with a fixed payment in today's market, or would you try to get a line of credit? If you're trying to make a rate decision in this environment and you have a mortgage and you want to see if you want to lock in or not, my recommendation is uh, if you cannot sleep at night, mm. right? It all depends on you. If you cannot sleep at night, take a one or a two year fix because if you were to take a five year fix, you would be locking in at the height of the rate cycle mm. today. Uh, if you can continue to stay with an adjustable rate mortgages, mortgage, if you're on one, you're going to continue to pay down that principal as per your original plan. Mm. And uh, yes, there are more rate increases to come if you're able to stomach it and your portfolio can support it. Ugh. Stay with it because ultimately 18 months out, there will, we will see an improvement. Uh, so th these would be the choices. And I talked earlier about taking a variable rate with a fixed payment. That's also another option, but mm. not a five years fixed. Line of credit is a good option if you're trying to position yourself for future growth in the market ahead. Mm. If you want to be ready to buy properties, that would be a great thing to do. And you can use it as a cash uh, flow management tool in today's market as well. That's awesome. Great, great answer. Okay, now that we cover this five debt elimination or cash flow saving strategy, I have to ask the million dollar question. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the, the interest rate is going to go? I'm going to run away from this question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't have the crystal ball, but mm. here it, I follow a lot of um, thought leaders and research and um, industry uh, researchers on mortgage rates and here is my observation. My observation is it's likely we're going to see rates increase again before the end of the year. The next Bank of Canada meeting is on Octo in October and there is one coming up in December. Are we going to see the same magnitude of increases and pace? Uh, unlikely. I think we are reaching the top of the hill. Um, however, however, it's all dependent on how inflation plays out and the uh, core inflation measures. Uh, we started to see it come down a little bit, but it's too early to tell. So these are my observations. And if history repeats itself, once we plateau at rate increases, the bank tends to sit there for quite some time to mm. see how the econ economy is going to react. So before they start to remove their feet off the uh, brakes, yeah. that's not going to be any time soon, unfortunately, I don't think. I think we're in for about 18 months uh, ride, so not until 2024 where we would see some relief. That's on the variable rate front. On the fixed rate front, um, the four years swap index um, implies that fixed rates may come down sometime in 2023 when I have no idea. But this is why right now I would suggest not to lock into a five years fix, but to either ride the wave if you're on a variable rate mortgage, if you want to sleep at night, then take a one year fixed or a two year fixed or get into a variable rate with a fixed payment. So thank you so much, Dahlia, for help explaining all these tips on resolving the immediate cash uh, crunch pressure. So for those of you who are interested in working directly with Dahlia and her team, how can they reach out to you? Info at streetwisemortgages.com is where you can email us to book a complimentary session to get a second opinion or to assess your situation and help you come up with some solutions. Or if you are in growth mode and you're looking to grow, uh, we also do something called the financing roadmap to mm. help you position your portfolio for growth. But a lot of clients, like you said, they want to be able to sleep at night. They want to be able to deal with the cash flow pressures before they get back into that growth mindset. Absolutely. And you also do simple, straightforward primary residence mortgage as we well, do, right? Of course, yes. yes. Everything. Of course. Yes. And then you also service, if I'm not mistaken, I got emails 
from you as well um, that you now service all uh, Canada wide. We service multiple provinces, Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia, Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan, and Edmonton. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Wow, that's yeah. great. So for those of you who are interested in working with Dahlia, um, the contact information would be in the description below. And if you enjoy our video, make sure you share with your friends who may need some help. And uh, hopefully you can get some good ideas to alleviate some of these uh, cash crunch pressure. Until next time, make sure you give us a thumbs up too. Until next time.